look at all this fat and look at all this coffee. What could this possibly mean? It means four different kinds of keto coffees. That's right, I'm gonna give you four different recipes, each of which has a different purpose. So no matter what your keto goal is, there's gonna be a coffee for you. So let's go ahead and let's get right into the fun stuff. Hey, you're watching the internet's leading performance and nutrition channel, and the leading keto and fasting channel on YouTube. New videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos coming out in between those days. So make sure you hit that little bell button and turn on notifications so you can know whenever I go live. Also, make sure you check out highleat.com so you can get the premium performance apparel that I'm always wearing in my videos. Let's get to some cooking. All right, so the cool thing is every single one of these keto coffee recipes is simple to make. Obviously, you can use a measuring spoon if you want to, but I'm just gonna kinda eyeball most of this stuff because this is something that you're gonna be making frequently and you're not gonna always have a measuring spoon handy. So everything might just be a little bit eyeballed, so bear with me if my measurements are a little bit, well, not so perfect. The whole idea behind keto coffee is you're mobilizing fats with the caffeine and you're getting the fats into the system so that the liver can produce those ketone bodies and give you the energy and the fuel that you need. But each one of these does something slightly different. So the first one that I wanna start with is your morning keto coffee. This is your inflammation fighter. So this is gonna be the one where you're gonna to wanna to keep dairy to a little bit of a minimum, but you're gonna have ingredients in there that are gonna bolster your anti-inflammatory responses within the body to make it so that you can live a clean, healthy, energetic life. So all we have here is 10 to 12 ounces of regular good old fashioned coffee. Okay, so with this one, we're gonna go with one teaspoon of ghee. Okay, the reason that I'm using ghee is because I don't wanna have heavy, heavy dairy in the morning. See, if I go with regular good old fashioned grass-fed butter, like I'm usually a proponent of, then we're having a little bit of an inflammatory response. You see, even grass-fed butter still can trigger some inflammation within the body. So if we go with the ghee, we don't have the milk solids in there. We just have the pure butter fat, which is exactly what we want. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go with some coconut cream. Okay, you're gonna find this stuff just in the regular, ordinary grocery store all the time. You're gonna find it in like the ethnic section, the Asian section, you might even find it in the baking section. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eyeball a little over a tablespoon of that in there, okay? You can put a little bit more if you like sort of the creamy consistency of that. In fact, I'll put a little bit more. This is what makes it sort of as the, uh, sort of the substitute for heavy cream in this case. Okay, so that stuff's really yummy. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a little dash of turmeric. Now, the funny thing is putting turmeric in coffee sounds like it would taste a little bit gross, but it's actually really, really tasty. It gives it just enough spice that you actually want, and the acidity of the coffee works really, really well with the pungent taste of the turmeric. So just trust me on it. Plus, you're getting a powerful anti-inflammatory effect there. Then, of course, we have a little bit of stevia. You don't need much, and you can use monk fruit too. I'm a huge fan of monk fruit as well. But I'm gonna put like five drops, three, four, five, of organic stevia liquid in there. I like to use the liquid because it doesn't have the maltodextrin or anything in there. Okay, then here's the weird one that people usually think I'm crazy for doing. I'm gonna add some good old fashioned salt. Couple cranks of it. Why am I doing that? First thing in the morning, you need the salt, especially on a ketogenic diet. Your body is burning through minerals. You're excreting them all the time. You're not holding as much water on keto because for every one gram of carbohydrate you store in your muscles, you hold about three to four grams of water. So that means that when you're urinating a lot, you're losing a lot of your minerals. So add the sodium into the mix first thing in the morning, supports the adrenals, gives you a lot of energy. So this is the anti-inflammatory recipe, pretty straightforward. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna whip this up. And voila. So see, it's got a nice little golden color to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and pour that one into my cup over here because I'm gonna need this one later. Look at that. It looks like a caramel macchiato. In fact, you could actually add a little bit of natural caramel flavoring to that and it might not be too bad. All right, so we got one down, the morning inflammation booster, all right? That's definitely one you wanna start your day with. All right, now I wanna move into the lunch replacement. The reason I'm doing a lunch replacement keto coffee is simply because a lot of times people want a solution to be able to sub out lunch with. Maybe they don't wanna go out to lunch or they don't have time or they just like the taste of keto coffee. Well, the thing is you don't wanna have the copious amounts of fat that you might have in the morning. So we're gonna reduce the fats a little bit and we're gonna change some of the macronutrient profile. But also because it's midday, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna to switch to decaf. Believe it or not, the polyphenols in coffee still support good ketone production and still support fatty acid mobilization. So personally, I like to cut caffeine out after noon just because otherwise it keeps me up. So I'm gonna go ahead, got my decaf here. Okay, and then with this one, I'm gonna actually go with the grass fed butter. So in this case, I'm not as worried about keeping inflammatory markers super low. Okay, I'm already into the day. I'm already having an inflammatory response that's naturally occurring just from day-to-day -day operations of my body. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put two tablespoons 
of grass-fed butter in here. Okay, again, going for the Kerrygold stuff just because grass-fed's always the way to go. You're gonna have a better omega-3 to omega-6 profile. So that's the way to go there. Then, super simple, I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons of collagen peptides in there. Why? Because I'm keeping the fats a little bit lower, I need to have the protein a little bit higher. If I have the protein a little bit higher, it's gonna make it so that my body can actually metabolize the fats in my body a little bit better. I call it the protein sandwich hypothesis, and I've done videos on it before. Basically, it means I keep my protein a little lower and fats higher in the morning, then I drop my fats and increase my protein a little bit midday, and then vice versa later on in the day. So basically, all I'm doing here is reducing the fats. So I got some collagen in there, and then I'm gonna add just a little bit of cinnamon. Now in this case, I'm using some pumpkin pie spice that has cinnamon in it just because it's fall and I wanna do that. But you're gonna add about a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon of cinnamon. The reason you're doing this is to control any blood sugar rises and falls that might happen throughout the course of the day. Cinnamon brings down your blood sugar. So if by mistake you ingested some carbs, your blood sugar is rising and falling with stress, the cinnamon's gonna help bring that down. And that's all it really is to that one. We can add a little bit of stevia if you want, but honestly the cinnamon gives it a nice taste so you really don't even need it. Go ahead, mix this bad boy up. A Little bit of a different color from the last one. That turmeric makes it so it's not so orange, but you have a nice creamy latte looking drink here. So go ahead and pour that sucker in. This one is decaf. And remember, you're still getting a powerful effect. You're not gonna get as much of the fatty acid mobilization with that as you might be with the morning drink. But the thing is, this is a meal replacement. You just got a couple hundred calories in here instead of eating lunch. That's perfect for ketone production. Plus you still have some protein, so you're still maintaining that positive nitrogen balance. You're not gonna break down protein. You're not gonna break down your muscle tissue. All right, now we're gonna get into the fun one. All right, I call this one the treat slash calorie bomb. This isn't one that you wanna have all the time. This is one you maybe wanna do two times a week, and I'm gonna show you why, because it's freaking amazing. All right, you're starting with your fully leaded coffee, okay? Again, two times a week you can do this. I got my two tablespoons of grass-fed butter, okay? Then I'm still gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put in a full teaspoon of ghee, so I'm doing butter and ghee. The reason I'm doing the ghee is because I want the butyric acid out of it. You see, butyric acid is a short-chain fatty acid that actually helps feed the cells within your small intestine. So we're talking about the enterocytes, the cells that line your small intestine. They're literally living things, and they feed off short-chain fatty acids. And ghee is one of the only places that you can actually get those short-chain fatty acids in an actual consumable form. Usually, it's partially digested food that contributes to those short-chain fatty acid populations in your gut. All right, so now we've got that, but now we're gonna add the big no-no, all right? Normally, I wouldn't condone this, but this is a treat. We're gonna go with the organic heavy whipping cream. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add about two tablespoons. Then we get really creative. Now, we go ahead and we add some cocoa into the mix. So I'm doing unsweetened baking cocoa. Okay, there's no sweetener added to this, it's just straight cacao. That's all we're doing. Okay, now cacao has a myriad of different benefits. Okay, we're talking about phenylethylamine, we're talking about andandamide, we're talking about all these things that are gonna help your body produce what are called endocannabinoids. Endocannabinoids are what allow you to feel good. They give you that sense of bliss. In fact, they've been noted as the bliss hormone. So endocannabinoids are produced whenever we eat chocolate. That's why we get that euphoric feeling. So here, we've got heavy cream, we've got chocolate, we've got ghee, we've got all the good tasting stuff. And then of course, we gotta add some stevia to the mix just to make it at least sweet, five or six, drops in there. All right, so now we whip this baby up. This honestly tastes like a mocha. So right now we've got the breakfast drink, we've got the protein lunch drink, and we've got the treat drink, okay? The one that you're gonna have two times a week, remember that. Every morning, potential lunch replacement, two times a week as a treat. All right, now we have the really interesting one. This isn't even coffee at all. This is if you have a craving issue. So the cool thing about matcha, which I'm gonna use, okay, straight up matcha. Matcha is finely ground baby green tea leaves. So you're getting all the power of the epigallocatechin 3 gaily, which is the EGCG that actually gives you the powerful effect of green tea. Okay, but you've got it in a form that only has like 40 or 50 milligrams of caffeine. So even if you had this midday, you're probably not gonna be up all night. That's the nice thing but it amps up what is called cholecystokinin production within your body. That is going to fight cravings dramatically. So basically it helps the small intestine communicate with the brain so that you don't have cravings. This is a great one to do if you just want a treat, but you don't want to go with the heaviness of coffee. So what I do is I've actually got some warmed up almond milk already. So I'm gonna add some warmed up almond milk here, probably about eight to 10 ounces. 
So now I've got, so I've got my almond milk with my matcha. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some ghee into this one. So again, I'm gonna go with probably about a teaspoon again. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in there. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna go back and I wanna add some coconut cream again. Coconut cream goes really, really well with matcha. In fact, if you've ever had like a matcha latte from Starbucks or anything like that, it's the creaminess that gives it that. But you can get that same effect with a tablespoon of coconut cream. So I'm just adding a little bit of that. You can add a little bit more if you want to. This stuff is awesome. Okay, and then lastly, just gonna add a little bit of stevia just to make it a little sweet. Again, you don't have to add the stevia. I just like to do this to make it taste a little bit more like a treat. All right. Boom, the craving killer. I'm gonna try that one right now because I love this one. Midday here and I can have this. That is so good. All right, to lay them all out for you. Breakfast, the inflammation fighter. Decaf, the lunch replacement. The sweet treat two times a week. And the craving killer, whenever you want it, whenever you need a couple calories just to get you through the afternoon. Guys, these are four keto coffee recipes that are gonna revolutionize the way you do keto. Next time someone tells you to come over to their house for some Bulletproof or keto coffee, tell them you know how to make it better. Get these ingredients, keep them stored up at your house, and have some fun with this. Honestly, the whole fun of keto is being able to get to experiment with foods that you ordinarily wouldn't be able to have otherwise. You wouldn't be able to have butter, you wouldn't be able to have ghee when you're on a traditional diet. So you might as well have some fun with keto while you can. Enjoy it in all kinds of different drinks and get different benefits to make it the best possible lifestyle you could ever possibly live. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos or questions about ingredients that you want to add to any one of these recipes, put them down in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next video.